with no limit. Kingdom with no limit is our weekly TV show where we talk about the kingdom, the Bible, the word of God, and every good things that you can imagine in order to uplift your spirit and let you know how our kingdom process things. So before we go into the word of God, we want to go ahead and start with the prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We thank you for all your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the salvation. We thank you for the protection. We thank you for the grace and for the peace. Lord, I pray by the mercies of God that you keep us safe. I pray by the mercy of God that you give us your word. I pray by the mercies of God that you give us what we need uh, to, uh, to go to another level, to grow in the knowledge of God. Let your spirit take full control of this moment. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Yes, you are a kingdom with no limit. This is our TV show. Uh, we try to explain the kingdom to the best of our abilities. And this one time we are into a new series called Love. Love, double swing door, love transfer. We want to talk about love. We want to go into the Bible and dissect and explain what does love mean and what is it work, how does it work. Um, is the love for your neighbor as the same as the love for your enemy? Is the love for your enemy as same as the love of God? And all this together, we're going to break this down so you guys can be blessed. And we understand one thing that whether you are rich, poor, tall, short, yellow, green, black, white, whatever, uh, whatever person you are, there is one thing that unifies, that make, uh, there is one common denominator, that denominator is love. We're all seeking for love. We're all seeking for affirmation. And in our last shows, we're talking about love and how love is transferred. And we said a lot of things about uh, loving like God. We talk about if, if, if love heals more than the gift of healing. Love heals more than the gift of healing. Um, why? There are some people that will recover not only when you give them money, but when you show them a lot of love. And the Bible teaches that for God so loved the world that he gave his only one son. He was the product of love that made God to give. And God gave what was dear to him to the world. So if God gave what is dear to him uh, to the world, give his son to death for, to redeem the world, I mean the world is as valuable as the life of his son. Oh my God. So that's love. And love is a very powerful ingredient. Uh, in our last shows, we talked about uh, whenever uh, there is no love, the person that does experience love is broken. We will come back to it, all right? And I also say that before you ever enter ministry, all kind of ministry, if you're a Christian, before you ever start a ministry, love must be your platform. Love must be your foundation. You must understand the mysteries of love. Uh, Whatever you want to do, if you want to develop yourself, develop your ability. And uh, we say that you measure, we measure that we are children of God by the amount of love we have within ourselves. You are not measured by, by your amount of, uh, you are not measured by, um, uh, your, your, the fact that you are a child of God is not measured by how big or thick is your Bible. It's not measured by how money you give on church. Uh, in the church of basket. It's not measured by how many people you brought to, to life, to Christ. No, it's measured by how much amount of love you have. Now, I'm using the amount of love because love can be quantified. So, the love of God is misunderstanding. I've, I've, got the, I've had the chance to talk to uh, somebody, I, be, I believe yesterday, he, he, he interviewed another person that had a near-death experience. And in the process of near-death experience, he was out of his body for about, in the coma for about a week or so. I don't know the exact day. I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Come to realize that, uh, that he, he went through a portal where he experienced the presence of Jesus. And this is what he understood, that the love of Jesus is not only for Christians. The love of Jesus is also for humanity. And I say, yes, this is true. Jesus loved everybody. Religion segregated love as being just part for uh, a, a, a blessing for only Christians. No. 
God loves everybody. Who among you guys, uh, among you guys watching me, if, even if you have a child that is in jail and the other child is doing great, he's a lawyer, he's a doctor, the fact that he's your child, you're still going to love that child even though he's doing bad things. That's the love of God. So love is what we're going to explain today. We're going to talk about love in, the, in depth. And I told you that many people that are sick and they suffer from torment, depression, hatred, low self-esteem, the gift of healing and prayer will not change much. What they need is love. A child that has experienced a childhood trauma where father wasn't there, mother wasn't there, they lived in a very complicated situation, Prayer may work, but I tell you, you're going to have to give a lot of love to that child. A lot of love. Lots, 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 lots of love in order for this child to make it through. Yes. Uh, uh, and love heals wounds. Love heals wounds. Love heals emotional uh, distortion. Love heals emotional pain. Love care all pain. Love, love feels the void in people have. That's why, the, you see, the thing is simple. If God is love, and for God so loved the world that he gave his only one son, that means, uh, and God is powerful. God is powerful. Now, no matter how God is powerful, the first thing God does is not to heal everybody at the hospital, but is to show love. Why is, it that, why is it that God knowing that the world is sick, there is so much problem in the world, he rather loved the world and sent his son than to heal. You should have, he should have just healed the whole world, and we are done with it. He should have just sent an anointing and the power to heal sick people, and we are done with it. But he first of all manifests his love because God understood that some of the stuff we go through daily is not because we want anything, but it's just because we want love. And love is going to heal us more than the actual healing of our body because love does not heal your body. Love heals your spirit and your soul. So, there is no worse sickness than the sickness of your soul. There is no worse sickness than the sickness of your spirit. There is no worse sickness than the sickness of your emotion. So instead of healing the flesh that is sick of any sort of cancer, God said, I'm going to go ahead and heal your soul from sin. Heal your soul from pain. Heal your soul from rejection. And once you are healed from all this, my God, once you are healed from all this, then you can therefore experience what his physical healing is about. So God sent love in order for us to receive healing. Now, yes, so the gift of healing uh, is not to be compared with the grace of love, right? And I also said in the book of First John chapter 4, verse 8, he who does not love God, not uh, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. If anyone does not love, if anybody living around you does not love, it is God that he doesn't know. He doesn't know who is God because God is love. So if I don't not know what is love, that means I don't know God. So no matter how much I shout God's name, if I don't love, I don't know God. It's not love that I don't know. I don't know God. Because God is love and love is God. Right? It says, when love is communicated and it is felt and it is received, that makes of love the most powerful tool we need. So we, saw, we said before that love is a language. Love is a language. Love is, a, is powerful. Love is powerful. Love is energy. Love is as a communication, a way to be communicated. So if love is communicated, that means love is a language. And if love is a language, we have to learn how to speak the language of love. And I said that love 
no matter how powerful is love, love cannot be efficient unless it is received. All right? So God so loved the world that he gave his only one son. God gave his son to die at the cross so that whenever we receive the son, we receive the love of God. Then we are saved. So if God, if Jesus died for the whole world, why is it that the whole world is not okay? It's because even though God gave his son to the whole world, the whole world did not receive the son. So, no matter how powerful is love, and we all agree that love is powerful, love is not efficient unless it is received. You'll understand what I'm talking about. So, a soul that doesn't understand the language of love, it is a soul that is detached from God. Anyone that doesn't understand the, the language of love is a, is, is, a, is a person that is detached from God. Because there are some people because they don't understand love, whenever God was trying to do something good in their life, even though it looked hurtful and painful for the flesh, they reject it. When you meet someone that doesn't understand the language of love, whenever you try to do something good for them, give them an advice, uh, tell them something that is beneficial for their soul and for their spirit, they reject it. It's more like a child. You're telling the child, don't jump off the, the, the chair. No, you're saying this because you love the child. But the child doesn't understand the love of the father. So the, the child is transferring the love of uh, the, the message of the father, the not to do, as if it's a hatred. And we go through this in our society. When the father is telling the child, don't go out with this boy, the child understands it as my dad doesn't want my happiness. It's not the dad that doesn't want your happiness. Your dad is transferring love to you by giving you an advice. But you don't receive the love of your father because you think that your father is all against you. Well, why would your father be against you? So our problem is love is everywhere. Love, uh, the whole universe is saturated by love. It is by love that the sun rises up. It is by love that the moon rises up. It's by love that the, the, the wind blows. It's by love that you see the stars shining. It's because of love that you see the rain, a rain coming. It's because nature's understand that if I, cease, if I cease to function it, if I cease to work, if I cease to work, the love of God will not be manifested to humanity. Because that which is necessary for humanity to be okay. If you stop working, the love of God is not there for manifesting. God loves you so much that he realizes that you need the sun to be able to operate on broad daylight. You, you need the, the wind or the air to be able to breathe. So he gives it to you by love. And we don't receive it. And I'm going to explain to you how is it that love is communicated and we don't receive it. Look, I myself, Pastor Eric, I make the same mistake every day. And I catch myself listening to my sermons on Sunday and correcting because it's a price. The willingness of changing something doesn't, does not make you any more guilty. It makes you a child that is trying to learn to become better. All right? So, I say this. Your soul is not in a good condition if love is a problem. If a soul is afflicted, even taking time to hear what the Lord is saying. When your soul is afflicted, even taking time to hear what God is saying, it's a pain for you, all right? You miss out most of the communication of the Spirit when your soul is afflicted. And I want to pray for anybody here that, that is afflicted in his soul. The Bible says, if someone is suffering, let him pray. Affliction, you say, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, affliction can, affliction can destroy somebody. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the affliction you are going through, may you receive healing and the love of Christ. Now, how is it that love is not received? Again, God is love. God shines love. God breathes love. God speaks love. We were incubated in an, in an atmosphere of love. 
If God is love, and we all come from God, we came out of love. That's why when a child is born, when a baby is born, all the way up to he grows, he needs the love of a father. He needs the love of a mother to operate normally. If not, this child grow up to have uh, some defici- uh, some some uh, some some um, um, what might be the word? Some dis he's dis he he can dysfunction. He is not okay. When that child grow to become um, to not experience the love of the father, he's a he he's a damaged good. Let me put it this way, for lack of a better word, and not disrespect at all. He's a damaged good. So we are incubated in an atmosphere of love. We were created in love. We were birthed in, before we come on earth, before the whole universe that, that used to be in God came out, everything was protected in a cocoon of love. So when we came out, we came out in the process of love. No wonder why. When a child is, comes out of the mother's womb, this child is dropped into the mother's chest so that the child will have first contacts with, uh, with the mother. It is reported that when a child is being developed in the belly of a mother, the child, the baby, can distinguish the different voices, the voice of the father, the voice of the mother, the voice of anyone inhabiting in the household. Can you imagine that? So we are birthed and created in a system of love. So love is always given. Love is everywhere. And when I get up, there is love. When, when bird sings, it's love. When a tree turns yellow, it's love. Winter time, springtime, or summertime, fall time. All this is love. The love of God. When I grow, when I eat, when I work, when I'm, when I'm able to. This is all the manifestation. When I go to trials, can also be the love of God. No. Love is always uh, imminent, present, palpable. Tangible, but why is that we are not all okay? The reason why we are not all okay is because we do not receive love. The Bible says in the book of First John chapter First, oh no, uh, John chapter one, I believe, first verse from verse one to fourteen say, "Light shone, and darkness didn't receive him at all." See, the son of man was like light, but the light did not receive him. So, until we receive what is love, we can't operate now. How is it that we don't receive love? That is simple. I'm going to go through a whole process, and I'll get to explain there are many ways where we don't receive the love of God. We don't receive it. And let me tell you something. If you are able to receive the love of God in this whole process, believe me, you bless God every day. Watch this. When someone, number one, when someone is telling you, you know, I feel so good spending time with you. For example, number one case, we're doing some sad cases. When someone is saying, you know, I feel so good spending time with you. If that person is a friend, if that person is a beloved one that appreciates you, how do you respond? When someone is talking to you, you know, I feel good being married to you for the last 20 or 15 years. I don't imagine my life without you. This is a love language written. This is a love language spoken. You that is hearing it, do you pay full attention to what is being said? That's the question. We live in this society where we barely listen when people talk. When your wife is talking to you, you say, you know, it's been some 25 some years that you and I have been together, and I can't really live my life without you. And what you reply back is sometimes you cut her or him. How do you respond? When someone takes time 
to mature a group of a, a sentence or a phrase and release it something that I thoroughly thought about to appreciate you. Do you listen? Do you immediately pay attention to what is being said? If love is being communicated to your ears, does your ears ready, get ready to listen? Another example, if I say, you look good with no back intention, or maybe I say to my wife or my wife tells me, or someone dear to me that, is, that doesn't want any evil intention behind it. It says, if, if, I'm, if I'm told or I say to someone, you look good, and I really immediately the person say, you look good, all right? I reply, you look good too. Okay, let's pause here. I'm telling you, you look good. You got to be quiet and let me explain why I'm telling you you look good. Hear me out. Now, you don't let me finish and you reply. You look good too. You just got me. Now watch this. Why didn't you tell me that I look good before I tell you I look, you look good? So, if you knew I look good, why didn't you tell me that before? Now that I'm telling you that you look good, you're telling me I look good. No, 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 no. You're not meaning what you're saying. You ought to listen to me first, giving you all this comment and accolade. I'm transferring love to you. So, we don't receive love because of our inability to listen what one person has to say. Oh my God, I feel it. Example number three. If someone is saying, I'm sorry, and I reply, I'm sorry too. Those words cannot be said at the same time. I come to you, I've offended you, and I thought about it. The Holy Spirit came to me and spoke to me, convinced me I couldn't sleep all night, came to me and said, I'm coming to apologize, I'm sorry. And then in return, you take your phone and you call people. You say, he just came and apologized to me. Oh, my God. Or you go on social media and you put it there. It is the God that I serve that messed up your life all night. If you didn't come apologize, you were going to die. What? I am apologizing because I love you and I want peace. I don't come apologize because I want anyone to be right. So the fact that I come apologize is a love transfer. But you didn't receive it. By the law of receive, receivability, whatever that is not received flies from you. So if I'm showing love to you and you don't receive my love, mind you that anywhere you can go on earth, People might not love you. You know why? Let's say you are here and I'm here. And I'm showing you love. I'm telling you how I feel about you. Meaningfully, not evil, not, not, not with any uh, evil agenda behind it. Me a thoughtful and meaningful conversation. And you don't receive what I'm saying. Do you know most people that don't receive love, even if you don't receive love in point A, whether you move your whole staff in point B, in neighborhood B, and you still behave the same way, love will always fly from you. Whatever you don't receive, always leave you. And you can never give what you don't have. Well, we're running out of time. 
Uh, we're surely going to come back to it in our next TV shows. Uh, I want to bless you. And I want you to, I'm going to pray that you learn to receive the love of God. The love of God f through people, through nature. We'll talk about that. The love of God answers and heals every wound. And the devil is attacking you and making you feel that you are not a good candidate to receive the love of God. I tell you, Jesus Christ did not die for animals. He died for humans. Regardless of the religion, he died for all of us. Lord, I pray for your children. Many of us, we grow up without feeling what is love. We don't understand the language of love. So because we don't understand the language of love, we go about hurting other people because it takes hurtful people to hurt other people. I pray in the name of Jesus that the love of God penetrate through this channel, through this, through this screen, and touch them. In Jesus' mighty name, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>